This is Martin from Secrets, the channel for learning about trading and investing. Welcome to a brand new first episode of Crypto Assets Learning Series, where we are going to look at everything about crypto, everything that is needed for trading and investing in cryptocurrency. This is part one of that, and we'll try to brief it as much as it fits in the time for the video and subsequent parts will have more detailed and elaborate sessions in different other aspects. So if you are not subscribed, please subscribe right away and pass on the link to this channel to all your friends so that they can also benefit from it. So without wasting time, let's get into it and see what what is crypto all about. Right? So we will look at you know this is something new, you know, maybe new for some of you at least. Right? So we would look at what is the history of a currency, right? What problems we faced, or what problems we face currently. We will look at the differentiation between the currency that we have and the crypto, right? And um, what what all issues are, can be solved with the currency, what all issues may not st still be solved by the currency. So this is. This will lead us to understand why we need cryptocurrency. That's the purpose. So, if you look at uh, the history of you know, what is basically currency, currency is like nothing but a, you know, a medium of exchange you know, of goods and services, right? So, there has to be some. Com we had the barter systems initially, right, in the early ages, and then there is no balance in the. Uh, in the in the ex in the exchange that was happening, that's why we uh, had some form of currency like you know, gold, silver, and copper, and all these games. And then eventually, that was replaced by uh, paper currencies. And then the printing of the currencies in the early days was based on equivalent amount of gold being. Stored and um, that also changed later on. Then uh, finally, we have the international exchange demand supply based currency system that we have right now, which is heavily controlled by the central banks. Right? So, every central bank has all the authority to, to print the money as and how they like. Right? So, it is completely centralized, you can say. So whenever there is a right now, you know, there is inflation in, uh, just because more money is being printed by all the governments across because as a solution to you know, handle the crisis of the COVID, right, we have a lot of money printing in as well. But eventually when the money gets printed, uh, the money will flow into the hands of people and then eventually get into the hands of businessmen and then, right, so excess money that comes in. Excess money that is being printed in the US in, in, in the United States is one of the reasons why our markets are sorted out. One of the reasons, right? So, excess money in the market would mean that interest rates will fall, the investments that is done by a common man does not have enough value, right? There will be the real interest rates that get supplied, and then, you know, if you subtract from, if you subtract the inflation rate from the investment returns that we get, then we, we may not be getting anything, right? we, may not, we may be getting very less for a period of time, right? there is no point in investment, so that that's the problem, so government is completely controlling this and then, so this is one of the primary reasons why people thought that, right, people who invented the, you know, the cryptocurrency in the early, in the early days, Thought about uh, a solution for this to come out with a, a digital form of this asset. Right. So when you think about digital form, the first aspect that comes to do is security. So, so crypto is found to be a secure and you know, a immutable ledgering system. Right. It's secure in the way that it's not easily hackable the underlying technology that uh, based on which the cryptocurrency was involved. So in addition to that, crypto always 
had solutions for any trust based problems that we have, not just the, uh, you know, the trust based problem, one of the trust based problems the cryptocurrency, which is uh, not just trust based problems, there are ma many number of trust based problems, like the funds that you know, gets from, get uh, transferred from the government to the citizens, or the export and import transactions of money. Or it could be anything, any anything that involves a trust. So the underlying technology of the crypto had solution to many of that. Right. And uh, just like any other a new idea that comes in, right, crypto had a lot of resistances over the last several years since 2009 onwards. Right. 2014 is where it uh, really gets into the groove and then. Uh, now it is about acceptance. So let's see adaptive curve of any product or any, any any new idea that comes. There will be resistance and then there will eventually be adaptation. So that we are at the early stages of adapt adaptation is what we can say. So crypto, one of the major things is that it gives better investment returns as compared to any of the investments because you just can't have a system of money printing that can give investment returns. Right? There has to be other assets. Second, it's a digital asset. Third, is it secure solution. Four, the solutions not just for currency but many things more. Also, people have started believing that it can coexist with other currencies. It can eliminate a lot of middlemen and you know, a lot of cost and fees that is associated with that. Right? So people are able to transfer any amount of money across the borders without any hardly any cost as compared to all the middlemen banks and different agencies that comes in between and then take most of the money from it as commissions. Right. So this is these are a few of the reasons why uh, there was a need for you know, any, 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 any need for uh, something like cryptocurrency. You know, so it had all of these ingredients together. You know, uh, these are all the problems that uh, people started thinking about you know, an alternate, alternate currency. Right? So crypto is an alternate currency, it is an alternative to the traditional currency. Right? So, but these are some of the problems that you know, uh, crypto may be solving, but there are problems that crypto may not be solving or partially solving or trying to find a solution stage. But some of them are, uh, you know, crypto as of now, cryptocurrency is high risk and high reward. Right? The resolution of the high reward is there, but it's very high risk, you will get huge volatility. Same time, sometimes there's so, so many coins in the crypto market and then the liquidity of all of them may not be good. Right? So many exchanges, so many coins and you know, people don't know what to buy and some of them may have value but still liquidity may not be good enough. Then there are regulatory confusions in this point. So this high risk, high volatility, high liquidity issues and regulatory, these are all very temporary. Well, these were even more bad few years back. Now it has improved, people have started. So this is all part of the product or idea adaptation curve. The early adoption stage is what we are currently at. And this is the right time to get to know what you know, and uh, invest in this right. So, here in this slide, what about a few of the very important aspects of any currency? Right. These aspects, six aspects, can be used to compare crypto with the traditional currency, the normal currency that we have. Or what they call the fiat currency. So, divisibility is something. Divisibility in the sense we can we can uh, buy portions of that. You know, there is one rupee, there is two rupee, there is a uh, five hundred rupee note, there is a two thousand rupee note. So, and so this is smaller. Some of so most of these aspects may be satisfied fully or partially by both. Or some of them may not be so divisibility in this field is partially satisfied, but at the same time, can we buy a, a fractional or a decimal level of a currency by using INR or US dollar? 
no we can't okay we have coins one cent one dollar five dollar ten dollar uh, five rupee ten dollar. so they are restricted based on how the government decides right you can't have you know divisibility to that to that extent still visibility is there right but crypto you can buy you know for hundred rupees you can buy but that may be a fraction of the one bitcoin or one ethereum right maybe a very small fraction so that divisibility uh, is a key factor which is satisfied partially by one and then to very good extent by the new crypto concept scarcity is the key thing right where do you go for gold because gold is very scarcely available where do you go for currency so currency is in the hands of the government who prints it based on various reflection parameters and other economic conditions import export and all this so scarcity is critical but when money printing comes scarcity you know, it's our supply that's what information is all about so it's not fully met if you look at by the currency but uh, crypto scarcity is you know, is by design there right bitcoins are limited ethereum is also limited per year and so you know, so scarcity is there by you know, depending on the number of the blocks that is there in the chain of the particular cryptocurrency so that is very much you know very much uh, you know a feature that's applicable to the uh, cryptocurrency utility can be used for transacting so cryptos can be used for transaction just like northern ireland but not non countries from all all laws are not supported as of now even to the main world automatically same with case that right? can be transferred no one can see it for other currency it's possible right? crypto is evolving in that space durability also it's evolving in the space crypto as compared to right? counterfeiting is like you know, the security or you know, security aspects of it. it's counterfeiting very much possible in the currency Normal currency crypto it's difficult to hack or hack a blockchain or you know, non hackable basically the underlying technology at least right so so this line would basically what we have seen is why do we need this crypto what what does it solve what are what are things few things in the traditional currency uh, does not solve or partially solves you know may find solutions in the crypto. plus crypto has got many additional solutions to several interest based problems you will see right now next slide i'm going to explain about uh, what is the underlying technology cryptocurrency is a currency that is built on a particular type of technology known as blockchains so we will see what is a blockchain in a very simple terms in the next slide but these are the key uh, terms that comes in blockchain is having but a chain of blocks so before you know the chain means it's a network it's a network of blocks so before coming to uh, uh, blocks let's uh, try to see the distributed trust so that is a one term definition of a blockchain right? so everything in the traditional uh, solutions if you see they're all centralized we have a banking system bank is there in the center well, there is a central repository it goes to the bank you know, in government it goes to a central so there will be a centralized authority and that is where the key problems come from this centralized authority can get corrupted that's why we have corruptions in our country that's why all these scams in the financial world is there just because the central authority which controls this will have some malicious set of people who would corrupt it and then no it becomes non trustable so uh, that's that, that is the same thing that happens if we if you're talking with respect to technology also right if you have one server that server can be hacked if you have one database or one ledger book or one ledger system or one software which is coding all this different types of transaction financial or otherwise then that can be tampered with easily but what if we have a network or a chain of or a distributed set of systems together collectively 
keeping the record of the ledger right ledger of the records right the ledger of the transactions if it is maintained by a set of a set of people or a set of servers or a set of computers or a set of nodes if they are collectively you know, recording it and then coming with a consensus among them okay the majority consensus says this is recorded this way this transaction is done otherwise it is not done so if such a system is there then the, that will make it more secure more full more trustworthy and that is the thinking process behind blockchain right now when you say a network of blocks it is nothing but a network of databases or nodes or computers which would have some blocks each block can be thought of it as a database entry or something like that or an excel sheet entry just to make it easier to understand so these reports will be written not just in one excel sheet it will be written in all the nodes or all the computers in the network for the system right and a majority consensus has to come between all those record keepers only then a transaction will be added to the database otherwise database will not have that record if you no know, consensus of the different record keepers do not come out then that transaction will not go to it comes out and it will go to that that is where the concept of the mining comes in right so who there is cost associated with this network of nodes there has to be some kind of centralized system which will centralized means there has to be some servers or computers which need to be maintained right somebody has to validate this some set of people has to spend their infrastructure or computer or cpu so this is the idea so they have to be paid right so they will be so the idea of validating this with the help of uh, their computing power and then uh, validating the proof of work is what is known as mining and whoever is validating it will be rewarded and there is a consensus among these validators then the record will be ended in the block right block by itself will make use of technology but right? cryptography and several techniques technological improvements that make sure that this immutable that each block once it is written you know, the hashing mechanism will make sure that any change that happens will break the block right there is no tampering that is not possible right so this is the value what i saw the traditional centralized systems is the cause for all the evil right so a decentralized system where the record keeping is spread across multiple servers or multiple nodes is the idea behind it and this ledger keeping or blocks can be considered as a distributed database a database which will have the information about the blocks that is written in multiple nodes right and now who will validate it right how will they validate they will so how so you know, there can be many users validators also right the nodes that are joining the network to validate this record keeping business right they should be having very huge computing power either they should put good amount of money or they should have good amount of computing or infrastructure to participate in this that's the idea so if any tom dick and harry is allowed to come in without having enough computational power without having enough stake then you know corruptions can happen malicious notes can 
course. Hacking, right? Of course, the system to break down. So that is why the idea of having mathematical problems can be a very small mathematical problem without much logic, but it takes a lot of time manually done, but it takes very less time if it is done with a huge computing power. So computing power. CPU power or GPU power is the requirement basically to participate as a miner to validate the report. So once whole solving this mathematical problem first would get the incentive, would get the reward in the form of Bitcoin or or any depending on the chain that he is participating. Right. So that reward is drawn once that is reward is drawn, consensus is majority people has to agree. That this is correct. So that will eliminate the malicious nodes or malicious servers which is trying to break the system. So one once the problem is solved and the proof of work, that is what this mathematical problem solving is generally known as. So that once the proof of work is done, then the code is added and when it is added written in the database, the database has such a mechanism that Every block in the chain of blocks in the network of blocks will have a hash details of the previous block. So, any change that happens in the entire chain breaks, that is what hashing is all about. Right? So, that way it becomes the record key becomes immutable. Once it is written, it is written forever. Okay? So no, nobody can tamper with it. So any malicious nodes trying to this will be kicked out. Okay. Only those who solving the problems and then validating it correctly will be getting the rewards. So that is the whole technology behind the client blockchain mechanism. Right? So this is how it works, right? The transaction is requested by someone, the block representing the transaction is created. And the block is sent to all the nodes. Right? The nodes will validate the transaction. The reward mining is proof of work. Nodes receive a reward for whoever is winning, solving the mathematical problem to validate. Will get a, a reward. And once it is validated, right, the transaction will return to the blockchain and then it will be marked as computer. Right? So this is the underlying blockchain mechanism. Whenever we are doing it. Cryptocurrency by yourself, right? By yourself has to be recorded in blocks, a network of blocks, network of led, distributed ledger system across multiple nodes, which will be validated by miners who are who have huge computing power to solve mathematical problems and reward accordingly. And once recorded, it will be written to the blockchain forever. So that is the underlying thing. Now, coming back to you know, the cryptocurrencies, the different uh, types. So Bitcoin, anything other than Bitcoin, right, it is not the altcoin. Right? So Bitcoin is the first cryptocurrency that came into being, and it is limited to 21 million and 18.6 million is already done. Ethereum is the next one, which is also all kind of altcoin. Anything other than it is an altcoin. Right. So ETH is uh, Ethereum, it is a platform plus a currency. Ether is the currency, Ethereum is the platform. And then it's Cardano is another one. It's, so each of these will have use cases for that. So Cardano is trying to focus on developed you know, country solutions to developed countries and it's more um, you know, trying to be environmental friendly you know, solutions. Solano is doing. You know, Proof of stake in each one. So, see, see, each of them one will have its own use case. So, more details of that can be studied from the, uh, from the website Gems, right? See that. So, basically, the altcoins can be divided into asset coins, table coins, utility coins, security coins. So, asset coins are nothing but coins, uh, right? So, uh, it can be cryptocurrencies, it can be 
derivatives of question words like you know, ETFs or mutual funds or futures and options you know, all of these based on an underlying so that's that is what asset points stable point points that is again based on derivatives of more stable currencies like USD T USD T and BS USD Binance things and points like that so UDD points are points which are uh, no points provided by the exchanges themselves no? or <coughs> index no? points like that security points are points um, of underlying instruments like you know you can have a Tesla sound coin right? or a Microsoft sound coin so underlying will be you know, uh, another security or a share right? so, so this are so all these detailed research can be done there are several sites for researching on that right so basically the natural what I'm trying to say is you know, even any kind of yeah, there are thousands and thousands of points and more than 10,000 kinds of cryptocurrency points are available Bitcoin is the original one that is the most expensive which is limited to 21 million and is costing 46 lakhs or something you know, the highest price that is recently in the market and then Ethereum is there which is also costing $3,000 per single coin and then there are Cardano is $3 so so, so the different types of coins, right? the major one is Bitcoin and the Ethereum, you know, and the first four or five is what we have to look at, right? Now there are a lot of coins which are, may not be um, heavily priced right now, but the underlying use case behind them may be a big idea that can explode, the price can explode substantially in the coming years, right? So I only fool them and investing on them is the challenge right but uh, there is something known as interest intrinsic value you know, that is the asset you know, that is what we have to show bitcoin is into, since it is the first you know, and the oldest one the right, first course it will have intrinsic value people relate with bitcoin as cryptocurrency right although there are hundreds of other ones you know ethereum the intrinsic value is that it does it is not just currency it's a platform Cardano has got its use case that it is environment friendly and it is faster, right? So, likewise, so USDT is you know, it's more stable, it is not there's less volatility because it's mapped or pegged with the underlying US dollar. So, so the use cases behind that has to be understood well if you want to capitalize or if you want to invest on the coins which are not very popular at this stage and then. No, we expect that it may explode at full prices in the coming years. That is what all coins and Bitcoin are about, right? Now, Ethereum is something that has got a very good intrinsic value according to me because of the very fact that Ethereum got a Ether. Ether is the currency ETH, that is a cryptocurrency by the company Ethereum. But Ethereum mainly, you know, what stands out is that it is platform which provides infrastructure and nodes and tools and all that which facilitates other companies and other people to create decentralized apps applications which are based on self-executing smart contracts that work on top of ethereum virtual machines provided by the ethereum in solidity language it's a language that is used to write the smart contracts right and create apps based on Ethereum. So smart contracts are, uh, are rule based, are rule based uh, transaction facilitations you can say. They are self executing. right? So you, know, you can program your transaction based on rules or conditions and then deploy uh, 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 you deploy it on the platform nodes yeah. and this will be uh, validated by the uh, ethereum uh, miners okay. so this is all facilitated by the uh, ethereum okay. so smart contracts is uh, beyond the cryptos basically 
smart contracts allows you to um, to it's programming money basically so it allows you to go beyond just you know, currency transactions and build solutions for any trust based problems right so the example would be you know, um, having a blockchain build on ethereum platform with smart contracts to facilitate the transactions between the vendors of a particular enterprise right? so trusted vendors trusted enterprises or inter one enterprise or multiple enterprise group of enterprises enterprise in sense companies so this is a safe example there are uh, reality 10 reality real estate companies who have 25 30 vendors they all form one blockchain and they have together developed a blockchain system which is having smart contract based applications that works on top of it this facilitates right, secure transactions approvals right everything can be not just currency transaction it can be an approval mechanism it can be an order flow all of this can get programmed in these smart contracts using solidity language right? uh, based on the tools and nodes that is provided so it is basically the transaction charges has to be the gas of the fees will be based on ether because of the ethereum right so this is the intrinsic value of the ethereum so that is why you know, it has got more. So DeFi is a decentralized financing institutions. So there are this is you know a generic name that is given for all the uh, financial pro, you know, products and services that are built on top of the smart contract based you know, Ethereum platform, okay, which is decentralized. If you just Google, or you, know, you can find a number of financial products and services that is built on top of this. Right? So, the IY is you know, if you as an individual would like to you know, write your own smart contract and execute your own uh, uh, you know, Ethereum platform smart contracts for any particular purpose, you can do that as well. The institutions can facilitate applications, like for example. Right, you would like to provide lending right, you, you have an application that will lend uh, you know, loans right, to customers based on you know, uh, you know, based on Ethereum fair, like fair development application not about that then that's a, it, it's, it it can be any number of it can be any number of uh, products you know, or services that is developed by any number of companies on top of this facilities. NFT is there are all kinds of dApps you can say applications that is built on the framework. So NFT is a non fungible token. So it's very famous nowadays. So that uh, helps you to give authenticity to your artistic work or music or you know, artwork or whatever you make. You link that to the blockchain and then it gets automatically copyrighted right it gets automatically patented kind of like you know? so who want to buy your art can get a copy of that and they can be sure that it is you know done by the artist you and nobody else right and you get the royalty for that so you get paid for that so a lot of things are happening in the non-fungible token world a lot of things are happening in the applications of in the financial sector surrounding the smart contracts so that's what Ethereum's intrinsic value is all about. Well, certain things that you have to keep in mind when you are investing in Ethereum. So first thing, we have to understand the early adoption curve. You know, the product and the idea adoption curve that I mentioned earlier. You know, every product will evolve over a period of time. Right? Initially, as I said in the beginning, anything like crypto, any idea like cryptocurrency or any, you know, even I didn't believe it initially. Right. It took some time for me to understand the uh, concept in the early stages. So, uh, any product, any idea, any technology, you know, 
which goes through a early adoption phase. So the, very few people will be ready to accept it. A lot of you know, pawns land across. Uh, disadvantages may be there. A lot of things may be broom and scope may be there. But eventually it will evolve and then slowly, slowly it will improve itself and then more people will adopt it and that is the case where you are to reach your maturity stage and then eventually it will uh, start falling in some other product will get some other technology or some other concept or idea will replace that. So that is the you know the evolution curve you can say. So right now we have problems of high risk, high volatility, right? Liquidity issues, you know, um, pump and dump, hacking, thousands of coins, you know, you know, all of these uh, problems are there because we are in the early adoption curve for this asset or asset class, you know, or this product or technology or whatever we call it, right? So eventually all of this is will get, you know, in the long term, if you see, all of this will get. But when you are investing at this stage, you have to be aware that you are taking a risk where you can, where you can get to zero. With higher risk, but you can give higher returns. Because the price fluctuates again. People, the participants in the market themselves are not sure. Right? They have half knowledge or you know, not sure, absolute knowledge or gambling mindset, not long term. So, you know, all of these things. So, you have to be very careful about that. So the allocation of the investment into this has to be depending on what is you know, very small percentage of the total uh, risk, you know, depending on your risk appetite. Right? Total capital, very few percentage only really has to be allocated and step by step, gradually over the years, you should have to. That is something that you keep in mind. And avoid pump and dump are, you know, or it's not all coins, alt coins, right? alternative coins. Right? There are so many coins are there, but you have to know who are the people behind these coins, who are the investors behind this. What is the use case that they are coming with? Does their use case has any uniqueness? What is the competition? What is the market capitalization? What is the price movement? Right? What is the volatility? All of this has to be studied. So avoid pump and dump, you know, like you know, one toot next day. It flies kind of altcoins, please avoid and then look at you know look at the use cases and then pick up pick down. So it's, it's there's not much of fundamental data that is available. Even the technical also is only you know, hardly few years of technical charts are available. Fundamental data is also not available. So the only way to study is it to look for the news, keep tracking them, find the management or people behind it and then See if you believe in the same way as you know what the prospect is about, the use case talks about, right? That's all that's the only way to pick all coins. Now exchange selection is also there are a lot of decentralized uh, centralized exchanges that is coming that uh, connects the buyers and the sellers. So you have to be careful among the credibility, right? The security aspects who are the game, who are the people behind the exchanges, right? How credible they are. So all of this has to be you know, what support they give, right? What technology, what are the security aspects that they give, who are they backed by, and all of these details has to be also really well selecting. Good you know, wallets, that is another topic. So wallet is a mechanism of see you can so once you have a digital asset, that digital asset you know, can be kept in the exchange itself or it can be kept in your personal mobile phone or laptop or any USB kind of you know, devices or on cloud or or other websites or wherever you want you can random number of ways you can choose. So most of the exchanges will have wallets of their own. Some of them may not have. So there are companies which provide only wallet uh, services. So uh, the thing is that if you have less amount that is invested, it is advisable to keep it in the exchange itself because the cost of moving your digital asset or cryptocurrency from the exchange to the wallet, exchange wallet to your wallet, there is a fees for that. So if you don't have substantial amount invested, don't do that. Once you have substantial amount, it is better to keep it in the USB based or mobile based uh, wallet system. 
uh, a little thing behind that and then uh, you can explore more about this from uh, you know, the site which is coinmarketcap.com so all the details that you want to know about crypto is there see first one is bitcoin everything else is all coins so theory and kind of. so suppose you want to know about ethereum right you have a website details wikipedia details and all the websites related to that you have a community where you can go and you know learn more about it right you have this, even the source code the white the prospectus of that so all the details you know all the details the charts you know what is the market capitalization right the number of coins the number of market condition just like shares of how many people are holding how much right you can see the charts and how the price moment is happening you can read about the different news that flows in right and all of these details so you see all news about the theory right how the charts so complete information is there and it's a very useful site which you can keep track of in qm so that's the way you have to go about uh, uh, lying about exploring about the crypto right uh, so you can use the technical charts fundamental news you, you have to see and then you know, keep track of that keep on you know uh, following the news uh, related to that right now another thing when you begin to invest is it legal to buy this it's absolutely legal to invest in cryptocurrency okay right? uh, but it is not legal to use it as a tender legal tender so that means you, you want to buy uh, you know you want to go to a shop and buy something and then pay with your uh, cryptocurrency that's not allowed as of now in india so many countries are allowing that but as in india you can't do that it's not legal tender but it's absolutely legal to invest in that now coming to tax liability yes we have to pay the tax liability but it does not comes under the capital gain Right? It does not come into the long term or short term capital. It comes into the other income bracket. Okay. So coming back to the legal status, there is always the fear that the government, government regulatory may come in, which is also you know, uh, not true. Actually, you no. Know, yes, government has uh, companies like Coinbase, which are crypto exchanges, which are listed in you know, Nasdaq and their you know, exchanges. So the, their government also so. Now the concept of crypto as replacing the existing currency is not no no longer there. The concept is that both the currencies will coexist, the crypto and the fiat currency, both will coexist. So all the regulated governments right, of all the developed countries and you know, are, are completely you know, framing the laws that are in favor. So eventually our country also. They are also doing. You know, they are also doing. Uh, policy making is in progress. You know, as we know, and it will always always be supportive. It will always be supportive only because there are too many number of people that have already adopted this globally. So there is no way you know we can step back. Right? People have already adopted it, and then the number is increasing day by day. So just you know, countries will have to make you know. Laws and frameworks that facilitates that. So, so that is something that you know. I just wanted to add it up to the legal status. Tax liability as it comes into the other other income bracket. We already discussed that. Now, how I got invested? I got started with investing, right? Yes, I invested a very small amount with Vault. I created an account, but I will be slowly adding more into that. No, very slow amount. No, I am very restless, but yeah, but I am. I believe in the concept, so you know, uh, I would be doing that. So, world, um, what I found attractive in world is that they give insurance in case there is a exchange hack or something like that. You know, if at all it ever happens, right? It's an insurance for the, for the for your crypto that is already put in the exchange, and their support is. Good enough. You know, we can connect with. You know, I myself found that my initial deposit money took some time to reflect, and then I was anxious, and then I pinged, and then I I got the solution for that uh, very fast. 
and also they have the they have the lending business also they are basically banking or they are talking about banking also they are involved this is reason why they facilitate the fixed deposit so you buy a currency immediately you can do a fixed deposit of that cryptocurrency with the exchange with vault so they give a fixed interest up to 12% 12.6% depending on what what currency that you are fixed depositing so every 30 30 days you will get the fixed deposit for the amount for which that you had bought the crypto so that is a good thing to reform okay i suppose it was very quick and you know, within few minutes it get approved it's all online and uh, yeah the people behind is another reason like you know, world is i mean a lot of it's a startup singapore based but um, indians are behind it you know, the workforce is mainly the mainly indians um it has got you know, silicon valley industries like peter thiel you know, their vcs his vcs basically funding and many other you get the funding also coming in it seems to be trustable um, uh, exchange to pick up right and uh, the link for opening an account is there in the youtube description you can click that and then open the account within few minutes once again this is you know before you invest you consult your financial advisor right you have to decide based on your due diligence and your risk appetite so i'm not recommending you to invest in this so you see i'm not recommending you to you know, uh, to you know, basically uh, you know any particular point or you know, i'm not advising you is not advising you just purely educational purpose for invest planning about investing right so i hope it helps you give your um overview on what is crypto currency what is the need for that right uh, what is the underlying technology for that and how does that underlying underlying technology works and then facilitate the transaction from end to end what is the concept behind mining what is the concept behind you know ledger system that is distributed and what is the concept behind proof of work and it's like what is altcoin and bitcoin are all different use cases and what is ethereum what is the what makes it stands out right smart contracts and uh, and the common general concerns before you start to invest right and then you know a little bit of you know one of the exchanges that i have invested in so, you know i have used to invest in it right so thanks for uh, watching if you find it useful like it and then pass it on to your friends and uh, so that they can also learn from it happy learning happy investing happy trading bye